My name is Carolyn Castaño. I'm a visual artist from Los Angeles. My work spans uh, a variety of media from painting, drawing, video, and large-scale mural installations. I grew up in the Rampart uh, district of Los Angeles, kind of MacArthur Park, Echo Park adjacent before Echo Park was Echo Park. And I remember seeing um, the anti-club uh, was this club that popped up uh, near Melrose and Kingsley where my brother's girlfriend lived and it was like written in like fluorescent letters and these kids were hanging out outside with like shaped heads and earrings and striped you know uh, leggings and cut off shirts and it was like this beacon you know in the distance where I instantly felt this attraction and ident identification with them and I think I was probably like 11 or 12 years old and just kind of coming into um, awareness of myself, you know, as a teenager, as a future fat, you know, person interested in art and to fat in fashion. And actually, this was probably my first inkling of what uh, art was or aesthetic concerns. So immediately, you know, well, not immediately, I would say like probably a year later when I saw more of these people, I started to uh, figure it out and I came home and like, cut my hair on a diagonal and something about that time period that it wasn't necessarily uh, so divided with about divided between class or race like everybody was different things it was you know Asian uh, you know Filipino kids uh, black kids white kids Latino kids and uh, there was more the the glue or the nucleus was about this interest in in music and um, fashion and crossing borders and when by the time I was 16 and you know had my driver's license and my friends and I would drive all across Southern California looking for the right party. Two of the, the people that I mentioned as early influences on me were the radical nuns or Las, Las Monjas Locas of LA which are uh, Sister Carita Kent and Sister Karen Bacalero. Uh, Sister Carita Kent uh, was a uh, nun uh, head of the art department at Immaculate Heart. You know, she, she used the, the medium of printmaking of silkscreen to create these kind of very political, polit politically charged uh, posters and using art as a way to empower the people. Also, Sister Karen Bacalero from Self Help Graphics, who founded Self Help Graphics as a uh, place where artists could come together, could come and use the printing equipment to create, you know, silk screen, all kinds of uh, prints. So they were really like, like really feminists in a way, like taking, they're like, yeah, 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 padres, you know, we're listening to you, but we're gonna take these teachings and teach uh, young women to be empowered, to be um, knowledgeable, to have a voice. I think of it relating in, in the, spirit of my, my work as a teacher uh, with young college students, with at-risk youth, and um, where it's really about stepping outside of being like a studio artist and being having that approach of, of generosity and of love. Well, my parents uh, came to Los Angeles in 1961 from Columbia, and they would go to down Broadway, uh, you know, strolling, and um, there's pictures of them at Pershing Square, uh, which my mom uh, or somebody wrote an old photograph, uh, you know, the Parque de los Locos. And they would call it that forever, which is the park of the crazy people. What I really um, have always been attracted to is this clash of different architectures and patterns that come along with it from the, you know, my mom uh, worked at a bank downtown and I would go with her to the bank uh, and hang out in the conference room uh, during summer vacations and so like those buildings are all glass and steel uh, structures <clears throat> you know very 70s 60s modern and then you'd walk down to Broadway and you have the mil million dollar theater where we would take my grandparents to you know on an outing like we're gonna go see a variety Mexican variety show and the million dollar theater is this uh, it's called Churubusco, or the very ornate Spanish Baroque uh, that's very L.A., you know, styling with the curly cues. And I think it's these two, you know, coming together that, I don't know, I'm just fascinated with it. I see, like, that the, 
the suburbs as a place in LA that's really a hotbed of creativity, um, which is antithetical to what we would think, like, oh, the suburbs, everybody's, you know, very, you know, square there, or boring. Uh, sort of post the 1950s Leave it to Beaver, Anglo family, uh, sort of model that created places like Glendale or like Lakewood. And so for these kids, I think, um, because it was kind of boring, like you would find ways to be creative and, and we, we would look at the center, look at downtown LA, look at Hollywood, uh, these naughty places and take what we learned from there and like reinvent it. Um, and so, you know, you would see like a guy with a mohawk and leather jacket walking down uh, Brand Boulevard in Glendale. And back then it was really like radical.